Welcome back. Before we take a look at the day's business news, let's take a look at the stock indices across the GCC. And in our top business story, the total contribution of the travel and tourism sector to the UAE's GDP will reach 8.5% this year, with a 4.5% year-on-year rise to 122.6 billion dirhams. That's according to a leading tourism industry body, the World Travel and Tourism Council. The increase revealed in the latest economic impact study by the Council is driven by growth in the UAE's hotels, travel agents, airlines and restaurants, as well as leisure industries directly supported by the travel and tourism sector. The direct contribution to GDP of the travel and tourism industry is set to climb by 4.7% to 59.1 billion dirhams this year, according to the WTTC. In 2013, the UAE's travel and tourism sector delivered 56.5 billion dirhams, or 4% of the country's GDP. Looking ahead, the direct contribution is set to increase by 3.1% a year to 80.1 billion dirhams by 2024, maintaining a 4% of GDP figure. Total contribution is expected to grow by 3.2% to 167.4 billion dirhams by 2024, or 8.5% of GDP. The increase comes as Dubai heads towards Expo 2020, with increasing investments being made by the private and public sector into hotels and the Expo 2020 site in Dubai World Central. Abu Dhabi is also investing in building its tourism profile, which includes the construction of the Louvre and the Guggenheim on Sadiat Island. In 2013, the industry is expected to have attracted 21 billion dirhams of capital investment and is forecasted to rise by 9.7% in 2014. Travel and tourism directly generated 291,500 jobs in 2013, 5.3% of total employment, and is expected to grow by 5.7% to 308,000 in 2014. By 2024, international tourist arrivals are forecast to reach 39.9 million and generate an expenditure of 105.4 billion dirhams. Net profits at Dubai builder Arab Tech more than tripled in final three months of last year underpinned by an increasing backlog of work and growth in its key markets in the UAE and Saudi Arabia. According to local reports, the contractor in which Abu Dhabi state fund Abbar is a key stakeholder said it made a net profit of 122 million dirhams in the quarter, compared with 32 million dirhams in the corresponding period of 2012, with revenue up 39% at 2.3 billion dirhams. The contractor has won a series of contracts in the region recently, including high-profile projects such as the development of Abu Dhabi's main airport and building of a Louvre museum and a contract to build one million homes in Egypt. Arab Tech's backlog of work in 2013 increased by 22% over the previous year to 24.1 billion dirhams and the company has also proposed a cash dividend of 0.1 dirhams per share, plus bonus shares worth 30% of its share capital. Full-year net profits for Arab Tech rose to 377 million dirhams from 139 million dirhams in 2012. Most of us are used to making transactions through de debit and credit cards, however, prepaid payment options have witnessed a sudden surge on a global scale, which topped the agenda at the fifth annual Middle East prepaid summit. Industry experts who had gathered at the summit discussed the opportunities related to prepaid payment options as a practical, transparent and cost-effective international payments gateway. According to the panellists who spoke at the conference, the global prepaid market is expected to be valued at $800 billion in revenue terms over the next three years. Focusing on the MENA landscape, representatives from Visa stated that the prepaid payment option in the region has witnessed a compound annual growth rate of 156% over the last five years, illustrating the demand for mobile wallets and new consumer experiences, particularly with regards to online shopping. It was added that the prepaid market has continued to evolve across the Middle East, which registered an 82.6% growth last year and has also increased the demand for prepaid virtual cards. Much of the demand has been for travel purposes, which allows consumers to top up their prepaid cards and make all travel-related expenditure in a convenience manner and within their preferred budget. 
According to the experts, the prepaid option provides consumers who do not have a bank account with a safe and secure payment solution and also reduces the attempts of fraud. The uh, core really is it's driving a, a desire from many constituents to replace cash with an electronic payment. I'd say there's three drivers generically. Governments looking to improve transparency over their economies, promoting financial inclusion, financial literacy. You have corporates as a second leg or trend where they're looking to take uh, costs out of manual processes, paper vouchers, replacing those with electronic. Prepaid is a quick way to do that. And the third is consumers that are looking for ways to segment their spend, perhaps around travel, or provide a way to gain access to uh, online transactions. Prepaid, again, provides a convenient, safe way to conduct those transactions. Well, from the consumer point of view, it's all about convenience, isn't it? Uh, so if you have a prepaid card which enables you to spend money abroad uh, without going through the pain of exchanging and uh, carrying cash, uh, that's obviously um, very interesting from a consumer point of view. Um, let's take another example, if I may, uh, transport cards. Um, if, in terms of this balance between security and usability, uh, the key thing for a transport card is you want to get through the gate quickly. In order to achieve that, sometimes we've seen uh, card schemes actually weaken the security protocols to enable that uh, to happen and so not inconvenience the customer. Sometimes that's led to problems on the security front. So it's a balance. You need to look at your risk, you need to look at the usability of the card.